more knowledge about Pangra and things like that. So last week was my intro workshop, was really focusing on choreography, uh, how to make choreography, just what is a folk Pangra segment, very kind of high level. Uh, and thank you for all those of you who are on that workshop. This one, uh, the, the background of this workshop and why we're specifically focusing on this rhythm known as chal. Uh, there was a competition from a um, online competition from a competition in Toronto. And they basically had said, make a chal segment. And they had made a boli and a beat and, you know, kind of mix it together and say, make a chal segment. Um, there were a lot of questions that came up some arguments even that happen about what the hell is chal? What is chal, right? And so I talked to Gurinder Paji about it and he said, hey, why don't we do a workshop about explaining the variations, what this rhythm sounds like, some of the different types of chal that you use with props, for example. And then also what we won't cover too much today, uh, but those are the things, what we call the variations, uh, different types of chal that are not related to that rhythm. You're talking more chal, kabutar chal, they're, they call them child, but they're kind of their own separate step, you can say, right? So I'll, I'll hand it over to Gurinder Paji. I just want everybody to know this is an immensely unique opportunity to be able to learn from him. Uh, he is, I know he doesn't like when I say this, but he is the pinnacle, absolute best Pangada dancer I have seen. Uh, and not only that, he's a great, great instructor. Uh, he danced for PAU uh, Agriculture University in Punjab back uh, in the early 2000s, 1990s and 2000s time frame. He then was later the coach of that team. That is a national award-winning team. One of the top Pangara universities in Punjab is, is PAU Agriculture College. Uh, and his background also, he's learned from some very uh, excellent dancers from Casa College as well as his seniors from PAU. So he just has a lot of knowledge, a lot of good ways of teaching. Uh, and very, very thankful that Paji wanted to, you know, share this information. So without that, I will now hand it off to Gurinder Paji. You go ahead. I'm going to put myself on mute. Last thing, if you have any questions, please use the chat uh, so that we don't interrupt. I will try to keep track of those. Otherwise, I'm dancing. I'm having fun. Go ahead, Paji. Can everybody hear me? Show me thumbs up if you can. But let me try one thing. And first of all, thanks for sharing. Uh, um, thanks for joining. And also, Vivesh, thanks for this opportunity where I can share my concepts with uh, uh, with these folks who have joined us today. Uh, just one quick, I want to make sure that you guys can hear Toll properly and then um, I'll start my class because if I put the speaker right too close to my computer or TV or mic microphone, then it gives a weird voice. <laughs> So I just want to make sure that. So um, let me, uh, you can say, make a couple of requests. First, uh, those who ha have not turned on the cameras, please turn on the cameras so that let's do these steps together. Uh, secondly, um, I'm going to share some of the Pangra concepts that I learned from my teachers, as Lavesh mentioned, from Punjab Agriculture University and Kals Kala Yamrsar, including my uh, Toli, that's uh, what we call in English, you guys can call drummer. Um, so those concepts, uh, you can say, may differ if you come across another uh, Pangra teacher who has proper Pangra training. When I say proper, proper means that who has competed in different competitions. And uh, uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit. Of, uh, uh, so... Uh, Today's class, I have tried to divide it into three parts. First, I will give you a very brief introduction about myself, and then I will jump into uh, some of you. I can see some familiar faces from the last class. So I will uh, attempt to define grace by using chal as a step. So I will show you the different variations in chal, but I will try to, you can say, define grace because uh, that's, you can say, there was always a struggle for me to define grace over the years, but when I started teaching some of the kids in this area, I live in suburbs of Minneapolis. So uh, that helped me a lot in, in defining grace. So I will share those concepts with you as well. 
So starting about uh, my Pangra background, as Kluvesh uh, told you that uh, my Pangra roots are from College of Agriculture of Punjab Agricultural University. Just like several land grant universities of the United States, Punjab Agricultural University is one of the land grant universities. This school has different uh, kind of uh, schools within the school, like uh, uh, College of Agriculture is one of them. College of Agriculture, Engineering, Basic Sciences, Veterinary, which is no longer part of it. PAU. I'm from College of Agriculture and I don't want to brag about my team because uh, uh, we never got a coaching from coaches. It is a Pangra family. Our seniors, they are like our elderly brothers. They taught us Pangra and I was lucky that a couple of my instructors, they were working uh, uh, in PAU and they performed Pangra from Khalsa College. I went to Khalsa College, but I did not perform Pangada at Khalsa College. But those guys who performed Pangada, they were working at Punjab Agriculture University at that time, and they coached me. I will share some of their concepts. Uh, I also learned Pangada from Master Janakraj, who is very well renowned trolley uh, in the world. He doesn't perform, uh, the, you can say, with the teams uh, anymore because he was very sick for the last couple of years. I uh, talking about um, my Pangada background. I mainly you can say performed Pangra for competitions when in late 90s and then I trained teams for competition for inter-college for university and national level for almost 10 years then I came to US in 2006 to pursue higher education and 2010 I met Lavesh in Raleigh I was at NC State at the time so we met very briefly for six seven months and then I got busy with my professional career for the, you can say next 10, 11 years. And then in 2017, I met a Punjabi guy in the park who is a very close friend of mine. He convinced me to start teaching Pangra to kids again. So then I started again. So I gave name like Minnesota Folk Pangra. You can find a lot of videos if you check at YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. So I have a, nearly 38, 39 kids, two teams. I cannot take more than that because I'm the only single instructor and teach. Uh, I teach only at only one day a week, which I, I no longer do because of COVID-19 situation. So this was my very brief introduction. So moving to the, I would like to define, you can say dance first in a very brief way. Dance, um, Dance is a kind of a way where dancer shares their emotions. Joy, it can be joy, it can be anger, it can be grief, it can be sorrow, it, you can say any. So, Pangra is the simple definition, the way when I teach my students, the simple definition of Pangra, it's dance of joy, where dancer shuts their mouth and expresses their joyness by using their facial expression and their body. That's where you can say, I try to define grace. So when I talk about grace, because I generally, when I teach kids, I always say that the first thing that you need to learn, I, I try to, you can say, make it interesting. I always say it is a triangle. So the base of the triangle is always rhythm. You need to understand rhythm. If there is no rhythm, no matter whatever the grace or energy you add, it is useless. So I'm not going to talk about rhythm with you guys. So grace, when we talk about grace, I always, the way I define very simple way grace is that I will, I will share you when I start showing you child, that you keep your head high. First thing is full facial expression. I have stopped saying that smile, smile, because the problem with the American kids is that they don't smile. <laughs> Somehow they don't smile. I don't know, maybe. So I have stopped saying it. It's not smile. It's the facial expression, full facial expression, just like this light. Okay, if I turn off the light, you will see the darkness in the room. That is, that is the glow sh that should be on your face when you dance Pangra. Then head high, movement of shoulders. That is the main thing one of my teachers taught, taught me that. He called me with my nickname still, he's in Toronto. He says that for when we dance, our shoulders should make noise of like, tuck, tuck. they should go up to the ear and come down to their chest out, okay straight up down, proper placement of arms and hands. Sometimes you see that how the sloppy arms are, fingers are open, 
and then proper placement of legs and feet that I will show you by using jaw. That's the simple definition. Again, I'm going to repeat full facial ex expressions, head high, chest out, movement of shoulders, proper placement of arms and hands, and proper placement of legs and feet and straight abdomen mostly. No haphazard movement. Because when we start, because energy is the kind of a, you can, you may say that why we, he's not including energy into the grace. Because energy is kind of, there's a very fine line between energy and grace because you, you to perform any task, you need energy. Okay, as a scientist, that's how I think. But you only add appropriate amount of energy so that you should not add haphazard movement in your, you can say, in your move. All the different things I have told you, I call these colors, head high, big smile, shoulder movement. If you start putting more energy, you will see haphazard movement. You start discovering some of these colors in that move. So with that said, let's, you can say, let me show you the outline of the chalk. So again, a uh, little, little bit more about Chow, as Luish mentioned that, uh, uh, because when I was competing back at home, we were not asking that many questions from like why this step has, is, is named Chow or going into the Pangada history because uh, there's a saying, the closer to the earth, the farther from the God. So we, we were kind of thinking that, yeah, we were just focused on the competition. So, uh, so there are different rhythms when drummers, they play toe. So chal is one of the rhythm. And another couple of examples like tamal, one tamal, two different rhythms. And then the, I think people named these steps accordingly, single pangada, double pangada. So chal is a kind of a rhythm and then there are steps on that beat. So the, I'm going to show you one type of a chal and then I think I sat down a couple of days ago. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, I was doing something and then I got bored and then I took a piece of paper and I came across, I think, 10 or 12 different variations in that chow. And I will show you. And then I will show you another different chow, Kunda chow. Uh, so, so first starting with a simple chow. That's what I used to do when I, all, uh, you can say, conducted workshops back in Punjab Agriculture University or whenever I teach my new kids. So the first thing that the analogy I use, it's kind of the outline is that you are sitting on a chair and showing the proper ergonomics. Again, the abdomen is straight because if you stay in this position, because let me show you one more thing. Most of the time the people that I have seen the dancers, they stay in this position where the knees are not bent. Think about going down, like you are sitting on a chair, imaginary chair, but you're, um, and then if you are a tall guy, like 5'10 or 5 or 6 feet, spread your legs more. I'm not that tall guy. And then you bring your right arm in this position. Do not close your armpits like that. The left arm st uh, stays straight. You can say paddle to your chest like that. A little bit, if it is down, that is fine. Don't go that so, and don't again close your armpit and don't shake anything. This is the haphazard movement I was kind of referring to. So again, it's a tap. It's like, oh, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So this is the kind of a different outline. So again, when I, when I was doing it, the, some of the things when I defined grace, let me, reiterate some of those things. So I'm trying to keep my head high, big smile or full facial expressions um, that I will give definitely more if there is a toll bead, real toll bead or people are standing in front of, <laughs> of me in person, then I think the real dance, dancer comes out of because I'm kind of a getting acclimatized to this new online life due to COVID-19. So it's kind of again, head high, chest out. If when I bring my chest out, you will see that my, this thing goes in. It's like an arc type back. So then proper placement of arms, no closing of armpits, no shaking off, no closing of even fingers. That much detail we give when we bring the grace into a move. So you go, if you stand in this position for 30 seconds, you will see the how your quad muscle gets warm up. 
So you bring, shake your shoulders like that. And then proper placement of arms is like your knees are in the diagonal position and the feet are in the diagonal position as well. But you stay in that position. So one, two, one, two, one. You stay 30 seconds in that and you will see the difference, how difficult it is. But slowly, slowly, because that's what I tell, used to tell my students, that fun stops once you enter into the competition arena. You need to go into a different um, comfort zone to compete in the competition. So let me show you this same job. Uh, let me show you a couple of variations and then we will do it on two. So this is what I call simple job. It is going to be a simple job, but I will bring variations in the upper body. When I say upper body, this position sitting on a chair will stay same from waist to down. Then I will bring variations in my arms only. So the first variation is this one. I'm bringing my left hand on the waist and the right in the air. And then it is bringing a little bit down, not parallel to the chest. And then you do the high. One, two, one, two, one. You can look toward the right hand because slight neck movement is also very important. Okay, I won't overwhelm you with little bit details, but still it's important. So one, two, sometimes the dancers, they keep on leaning on the front. See how abdominal awkward it looks. So try to keep your abdomen straight here. One, two, and another thing is this arm, placement of again this arm. So we are focusing on this sometime, even I forget that and see how odd it looks when we, it's a kind of a dead arm to me. So your body language is again not telling that you are really happy. You are should sure show the real happiness with your whole body language. So one, two, one, two. Okay, um, another variation, simple. You can just put the hands here and bring the chest out. So one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, staying in that position. Make sure you shake your shoulders and then, okay, there's one, this one might, you might have seen it on toe. So putting your hands, not exactly you, um, you don't need to touch your, the backside of your head. Just pretend and then you lean your body on the right side and go in that position again. So here, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, let me cover one more and then we will do it on two. Okay, so this is the one, uh, again, just, just like a wrestler movement. So you go on that position again. The position from waist to down will stay same in this simple child. So here, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Don't stand here and do that. See how different it looks when we do that. But when we go into proper position, like a sitting here, it's very hard, but it looks pretty good because when a dancer dances in a competition, he doesn't, or she doesn't dances for themselves. They dances for the judges. They dance for the audience. What audience expect, you need to deliver that. Okay, that's what you need to do. Uh, and let me cover one more quickly and then we will do it on. So this one is another one. So this one was here. I was doing in front of my chest, what kind of a, some kind of a rotation here, wrestler type or comedy player type. And then I'm doing here, oh, one, two, oh, one, two. Oh, no, the waist a little bit low, but one, two, oh, one, two. Okay, let's stop here and let me bring, um, let's do it on two. So the first beat that you will hear it's in Punjabi, we call it Girgada. It's if uh, English translation is kind of a, the drummer is saying to you, get ready. The step is going to start. You will hear that. And generally, I, I don't like this step somehow. It looks something weird. Instead, I, I would do this one. It has more grace 
So when I will again talk about grace, see when I bring, instead of doing this, I bring my arms like that, it completely changed the step. So that's how proper placement of arms and legs change. It adds grace to the step. So let's do the do these steps on toe. Hold on. My mic turned off, sorry about that. This was the simple jaw like our. Did, did you, how many of you feel the heat on your quad muscle by staying in? So it's it's pretty, pretty you can say, energetic step. So let's move on to the next one where we put our hand on the right side and then we'll do the next one. Let's start that. one was hands on the on the back Wrestler one again. Shake your shoulders. questions so this one okay Questions up to this point. So, Paji, I'll read them out, and uh, if everyone can type it in the chat, it'll make it a little bit easier. Um, one from Bianca. Bianca's on, by the way. She says, "In the variation with the hands of the back of your head when you do this one, okay, is there a slight back and forth motion with the torso as well?" So, huh? yeah, I think you get that. Maybe that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got that. Mostly, 
if it looks good, I have never done that. If you noticed it when I, I was doing it on rhythm, when I was going on the left side, I was leaning my body on the right, my abdomen here, like that way. Uh, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. I have seen that. I have seen that. So, yeah, yeah a little bit because the, the, it's it's a very fine line because when we instruct eight or twelve different dancers, he, everybody brings um, their own touch. Yeah. So it's very important when you are participating in the competition, you bring the preciseness have to bring the synchronization. So sometime, because I remember that when we used to do this child, there was a guy, so he started doing this thing. Extra touch. He was completely standing out of those eight people, but it, he ruined that stuff. But make sure, I, I'm fine, it's, it, it's a good, good moment, you add slight movement like that, but make sure that every dancer is doing that. Paji, I have a follow up on that one. Then I'll ask one from the audience or answer one from the audience. A quick one. When you're doing this one, uh, I find that my shoulders and chest is constricted a right, little right. bit because my hands are up, right? So I can't shake as hard. Do you yeah. do you put more focused or less focused in on chest, shoulders in this one in that particular one movement, or do you still have the arms then bouncing? What do you prefer? I, I, I totally understand that because here you yeah. are giving less importance. Very good question. Very yeah. good uh, because. In this position, you cannot shake your Can't shake, yeah, exactly. So, to maintain the beauty of this step, you just need to put your arms. So, uh, one thing I would like to, you can say, add here, as far as chest out is concerned, you still, you can like, say, that's why we recommend push-ups and all those things. I don't have that, you can say, I'm not that big guy when I was teaching uh, Navesh, getting old every day, so it's a, it's just, <laughs> You see that how I'm bringing my chest out, my leaning body. It's not like a, this one chest because your arms went up. So, but still you try to bring that archetype position on the back. If you do that, you definitely bringing your body um, chest out. It may not be that prominent, if it makes sense. Because yep, it, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand completely what you're saying. And here's another thing. It's kind of a developing a habit as well. Yep. If you developing a habit of these adding these colors to each and every step you will automatically do it because those who never shook their shoulders it's going to take some time to shake their shoulders on yes exactly step. yeah just a simple example okay any other questions yes a few more I'll, I'll i'll try to answer one so one question was are shoulders always supposed to move up and down for all moves i'm going to go ahead and answer yes for that one uh and especially with uh my style which is from gurinder Pahi style uh, I've never seen more emphasis on chest and shoulders in any dancer and anywhere than what Gurinder Paji turns and how I guess you can say this is PAU and his influences have done that. So not every Pangra dancer, if you watch from other universities, shake as hard. But my personal belief is it's the main movement, the heartbeat of the, you can say of the upper body, the kind of the thing that makes the rhythm of the upper body happen. So my, my opinion is, uh, yes, that it should be in each and every step. Uh, and like, like Paji was just explaining here, some steps, your arms are going to constrict a little bit more. It won't be the same shake. Or if you do Bedi versus Tamal, you won't have, you know, your arms are more moving in Bedi. You won't have the same level, you can say. But uh, yes, the idea is you want to shake um, in every one of them. Another question, Paji, I'll answer just because actually we're getting a lot of good questions. Are you landing... Uh, on your right foot on the beat for each variation or does it depend on the direction? So my, uh, this one is depends on direction, right? It's yeah. a direction. Yeah. If I'm moving towards the uh, left side, I'm yes. you can using that left foot, moving to the right then I will. And then I will sure. show you chow that I used to do. Um, uh, so uh, again, these, these are very good questions and those who participate in competitions because we always thought these things from the competition point of view. And when I'm talking, because several of those students from College of Agriculture of Punjab Agriculture University, which is one of the colleges, they, they, are, doing, they are at very good positions in different sectors of life in the United States and other developed nations. So just like me, they are busy in their professional lives. 
But when we were doing these things, and still when I'm teaching these kids, I, I you can say, uh, put my science background into that to develop these kind of uh, some uh, concepts so that the kids can understand pretty quickly. So grace is, again, the grace is the main important part because there is a youth, if you go to the YouTube, you would find, you can see plethora of videos, million, billion videos where the dancers are putting energy and people are screaming. But when I go, uh, you can say as a judge to judge teams, what I do, because uh, let me do, for, because explain you one more thing, because think about that when you go to, uh, in India, when we go to the like a music concert, concert, if like Glamali or Rahadali is singing, nobody needs any in musical instruments. The singer is the main thing that you want to focus. Lyrics, uh, you can say music, that complement to the main thing. When I look at the dance, if the dance component is not there, the dancer is not doing music, beats, now uh, you can say uh, formations, other creativity, it is, doesn't make any sense to me. So when I go for judgment, I close my ears and then I look at the dancer, is he really executing the moves the way it should be? And then I say, I say the answer is no then the, all the music or whatever the beat is going on, it doesn't make any sense to me because the dance component is missing. The main thing is missing. But anyway, so uh, what was the question again? One, one more question, Paji, that came in was uh, from Clara was, uh, sometimes I have, let me read it out. I've seen variations in simple child where the hand in front of the chest, right here, uh, moves to the left and right. You can say like this. I think this is what Clara is saying, basically. Uh, is that without changing the height of the elbow? So it's just kind of going in and out, you can say. No, Do you I consider that acceptable or like? You, you guys tell me that as a judges, I, I will take you as judges. That's what I tell my kids that you will be judges because, so I, I just formed this pose uh, and then I went down and then I, I need to focus on that. Because if I start bringing my arm movement into that, the shoulder movement will reduce. Okay, and then again, there is a variation among human beings. Some may start adding more, but it doesn't look good to me. Just stay still here. Even I, I go like it. See how my fingers are open? I always say that my pinky stays away from my other fingers. I try to keep it closed because see, when we put our hands like that, how ugly they look. But once you close, small things, small things. So that's why I, I, I won't add that. Just keep it, bring chest out, more shoulder movement. And then you can say, just unleash your inside dancer on that. You will see that, enjoy the music and you will do that. So, yeah. That, I think that was the, uh, all the questions, Paji. I think you answered all those, so you can continue. So, Thank you. Perfect. So here, here's another one. So what I will do that, here's a, like a hoy. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, you can make it an eight beat, you can make a four beat. I would rather make a four beat. So again, make a circle, clap, one, two, three, four, and then clap. And the, another one is, let me show you one more time. Because, uh, um, so one, two, three, four, one, two, I actually, I, I was doing five actually, yeah, that's, this is one. So one, Two, three, four, one. So you clap as your one, two, three, four, and then you again clap and make that circle, if it makes sense. We'll do it more on beat. I haven't done this one for a while. Now another one is pretty much starting from opposite. Instead of going this way, it is going this way. Go, one, two, three, four, oh, one. Two, you can go a little slower. One, two, three, four. Oh, one, two, three, four. Okay, so the one was a clap. Otherwise, like you start from clap and then make a circle and then clap. And then the other one, you go opposite and bring it in and again, spread your arms. And you might have seen that how I was changing my upper body. Again, the base will stay same. Um, 
Okay, this one you guys might have seen a lot of time. I'm not going to move at all. So uh, this is this is my right arm. I'm look, look, looking in the right diagonal. So I will go in that position again, and then it is kind of a motor wrestler type. So you do this one. Hold on. One, two, hold on. One, two, hold on. One, two, one, two, one, two. Every tap you bring your arm down. So one, two, one, two. If I show you on the front, then you can also lean your body as well. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. So most of the time people loosen their arm like that. Don't do that. And it looks even better if you watch Ashke movie, how the Amrinder Gill has done this move. Uh, you will see that tilting a little bit body on the right side. Oh, one, two, I'm sorry. One thing I uh, completely um, spelled wrong, like if this one is kind of a, use alternate arms. That's why I was kind of like something weird is going on. That it looks, it looked weird. So do alternate arms. So, oh, one, two, oh, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Yep. I was doing a lot of rhythm. Sorry, guys. So let me show you this four, next four, one by one. See that how I was switching my leg so it is like one two three four ho one two three four ho so after every four pieces you can go in this direction and change your leg and also keep on doing that movement if it makes sense okay let's do the clap one messing up it I will take it take this one on later I the clap is not going on the rhythm I don't want to show you anything wrong to you guys let's do the wrestler one first the one I just showed you one more uh, one more so you just uh, like doing the tamal too uh, let me clear clarify one more thing on the wrestler one the analogy I generally use you are pressing something with your elbows down one two one two one two don't lose your arms like that it looks pretty it's not it doesn't look good so the another one variation is like the mall too you again go in this position cross your uh, arms put your hands on your elbow and tilt on the right side and go like that Okay, 
let's try this one. last I think third last there are two or three more so this one when I was performing Pangra back in our late 90s there was a big name in Pangra at that time <laughs> that college name is Sudar College they had a very specific step it was a big college at that time like from the Pangra point of view it was a big team in Punjab and uh, they used to do a specific step that was their step. So the arm movement was something. So this, this, this. We never able to replicate that step or not that like mimic that step when we try to do that. But I'm going to show you similar moment in this chahal too. So again, you stay there. It's going to be a very tricky. So it's not a this one. It is not a this one. I'm taking my right arm on the back. One, two, four, 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 one. You can bring more movement into that. That will look good. You just show more like a wrestler type. So let's see how the arm is going back and then coming just like a some kind of a snake type movement that's what i could use that so let's do it on tool and see how how it looks Then I have two more variations, then I will go and switch to another chart. If none, then let's move on. So last time Lavesh walked you through uh, prop section. So there are two charts using simple chart. That's what I say to this chart where I'm not lifting my feet, just tapping my feet on the floor. You can do Kunda chow and you can do shika chal too. So the khunda is, we used to hold khunda in the right hand, like this position. So the hand, left arm will stay, it's like a more like an L type. And if you have a long khunda, leave a one and a half hand space from the bottom, not too much. And then you hold your khunda in a way, uh, for instance, this is the khunda, the light, and see how I'm supporting the rod with my thumb so that it should not be wobbly. So the guy, I can use this as an example. Uh, his name is Dalvinder. Dalvinder, if you take, pick the khunda a little bit down, go down. Starting, leave one and a half hand space from the bar, if it makes sense. Just yes. And then when you go this way, you are looking, the arm is parallel, the right arm is parallel, should be parallel to your chest. The left one in the air, not here, Dilvinder, up in the air. Yes, very, very solid. But loosen your shoulders. And then you are looking on the back side of the tip of your kunda. And when you make sure it doesn't wobble, so it's like, ho, ho, one, two, ho, go low. Two, ho, one, two, so. When I always say go low, why I can't stay? Your question, I can ask the question to myself to elaborate a few things. You may say, why, why can't we stay like in this position, everybody? 
So the, here, let's say I'm doing a step, any step. I, I will just make one of the steps, let's say, this one is a step I'm doing, or maybe single pangada. This one is a different single pangada with the right leg. Four, one, two, hop, one, two. And all the dancers, they are standing, doing this step. So the beauty is, uh, aha moments, when the whole team standing on their toes goes immediately halfway down like that. And it is like a, you have made a podium of the team which was standing immediately you kind of are sitting and looking at that. Those are the kind of, a, you can say transitions from one step to another that catches judges eyes. Judges like me, old guys. <laughs> Because those were the concepts like how they are moving from one step to another. Okay, so oh, the whole team is like that. First thing is it's a very beautiful staying in that, bringing her and bring the kundas right there and look on the back side of the tip of the kund. That is the step. Okay, and if you are doing shika, so again this is going to be a different feet placement my left foot is perpendicular to the right and then I'm let's hold on this one because I can explain it better in the next child that I'm transitioning any questions up to this point these were all the different variations let me quickly review that so the first one was this one okay second one I showed this one moving this one uh, you can put your hands there another one which actually you can also put your hands on the back. Very gentle, like that. Very gentle. Because there is a two more step like this one. So you can just put your hands like in the back and then go in that position too. Okay, so that one. And then there was both hands on the back. And then you go low. You can move on the left side, right side. And then there was a circles here on the side of your chest. This one is different that I showed. This one is different like a uh, Polwani step or a wrestler type step. And then this one is making circles in front of your chest. Like for instance, you can make combo as well as well. So one, two, three, four, hold. one, two, three, four, hold. one, two, three, you can create multiple steps, permutation, combination, once you have these different variations. Moving to the next one, so, clap. I'm sorry, I need to figure this out. This was not going that well. Uh, I haven't done this for a while. But this one was that, and the second one was one, two, three, four, and then the wrestler one with a straight one. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one. You can increase the speed depending upon the music as well, but don't try to paste the step on the music if it is not going along. Do not do that, please. Uh, and then hands crossed like the model two. That's what we covered. Uh, and then this one. This one I covered. This one like oh, one, two, oh, one. Because think about eight dancers doing this movement in sync, how pretty it would look in that sitting, semi-sitting semi position, or sitting position, I would say. Uh, and then I showed you the kunda. Any questions, Ramesh? I still have so to cover. Far, uh, no, no chat questions. Um, oh, here's one, sorry. So uh, I've often heard instructors refer to the first child move as jugani. Can you clarify the difference between chal and jogani? Go ahead, Paji. Very, very good question. So the way I understand that, and I will elaborate on the second part of chal, and I have that argument several times, even with my Pangada alumni as well. <coughs> Excuse me. The way I look at this chal is that when the drummer is playing the toe, and then there is a lighter part and the 
you can say heavier part where he holds the daga and other part is shadi which tan 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 you can say uh, um, our master always used to use the goat uh, skin or goat leather never used that uh, uh, aluminum thing for that shadi thing so my, my point is that i always say that when the daga hits that thumb it the hand hits that like the daga hits the toe and then hand goes in the air and then hits it back that's what i always told my student to press that daga under your foot like one two like the way my hand this hand is the you can say uh, uh, one side of the toe and my right hand is daga so it's a one two so when my i'm hitting one my hand there's a lag time my hand is going back and then hitting two. So the lag time I'm hitting, if I'm moving in the left direction, so one I'm pressing under the foot, left foot, and then the lag time I'm taking under the right foot. So one, two, so one, two, one, two. If I'm moving in the right direction, then I'll start pressing those counts under my right foot. But in Jogani, so position is again same very very good question so couple of things again the right arm will be folded not close your armpit stay in like that so and then left arm sometimes people they do this thing see how i'm covering my face we always used to say that put your hands on the ear stretch it make a coin so that you can see over your shoulders if you are in alignment with other team members, if you are making formations or things like that, that is very important. That's why I wanted to use. And if we continue this class, I can create several segments of different things and go deeper into that, into even the Jubilee part. But just for your, it is like one, two, one. I'm, I'm, I'm doing one here on my under left foot, right under, um, uh, count two under my right foot. So the beat is slightly different too, I believe. So one, two, one, two, one, two. Slightly faster beat than cha. Does it answer your question or do? Okay. It looks like yeah. it looks similar to cha, but it is not cha. It is a jugni. Uh, okay. Next. So uh, sorry. Go ahead. I have a couple more questions, Paji. If you uh, well, you want. Let's do it toward the end and finish the cha section. Sure. If, is not the constraint or uh, uh, it's not limited i can stay for 10 more minutes after nine sure no, no problem okay only one that i'm kind of a old guy it takes time to walk to me to warm up so uh, so the other child it's called a khunda child we used to say i don't have a khunda i'm sorry this is my favorite child and i will show you a few variations so the difference is the beat is same again the difference is that i'm bringing my left foot in the direction of perpendicular to my right foot, if you could see like that, if this is the better way to show it. So, but proper bending is another key. So I want to be able to, you can say, I will put my full body weight on the right leg, which is bended again, and loosen my le uh, left leg. So what I would do if somebody has Konda, so you hold it like that. See, the analogy we use that, um, um, how the Hanumanji is holding Gada. Okay, see how graceful is if you look at that. It's not like that, uh, the one of the guy, uh, Atif. So it's, uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't have anything uh, to show you, but it's like a, it's not going, see how the arms are going down? No, it should be more like that. So your arms go so that you can bring your chest out again. So. What you need to do here, it's a one, two. So the thing you need to do when you do this child, and I will show you a smaller version and then I will go on the backside of the room. You drag your foot on two, oh, excuse me, uh, during the lag time. So here, here, that's how you do move when you have to move on this child. So for instance, let me show it from here. So if I have the Kunda this, guys, take a look at that. So oh, one, two, one, I drag my foot and I just, if the, the gentle version is, you keep your foot on the right side, like a semicircular, 
and bring it on the left. Let me show you one more time. Hold one, two, hold one, two, hold one, two. But when you move, you drag your left, the right foot, which is on um, perpendicular to left foot. So this is the smaller version. Let me show you if I'm, I have to cover distance on this one. Can everybody see me clearly here, Ramesh? Thumbs up? Yes, Paji, you can see you well. Okay, should I show this way or going other way would be better how I drag my foot? I think if you do it the, uh, the way you were before from the back, it will be better. Yeah, I, I see it better that way. Okay, okay. So yep. let me show you the smaller version of this one. Sure. So, two, oh, one, two, oh, one, two. So in this child, you bring your left foot in the air and on the count of one, you press, put it on the ground on the count of two, you put it on the ground. So you're kind of a pressing counts one and two uh, with your left foot. And during the lag time, you're dragging your right foot. So this is, and that's how you hold Kunda. So hold one, two, hold one, two. You bring your chin up so that your head should keep high. Don't look toward the ceiling, but try to look a little bit high on the, like a door height so that everybody's chin is high. That gives a very nice kind of addition to the step. Okay. Brings the, it brings the confidence in the body, okay? Uh, so the analogy I use when I teach my kids that make your body like a warrior pose, like a knight, not a soldier, but the knight type, how gracefully they fight. But here, again, this one, okay? And then if the beat is kind of a slow, like not slow, but it is low um, bass wise, if it goes up, then I will show you what I would do. I have done that. So if the beat is kind of a low, like a and if my ball master is not increasing the speed, I just want to clarify this, it's kind of a hitting the same at the same pace, but kind of a hitting like bigger beats. Or see how my volume voice went up to justify that how I would do that. So if I'm, I will make, try to play tone with my, with my mouth. So it's a So this is a lower beat. Bass is same. If I go higher, so it's a So see how my leg goes in the air and comes back? Did, did you want me to show one more time or is it good? I think uh, one more, well, you'll do it with uh, toll, right? Do you have a toll that goes that speed or not? I had the toll, what I have, it's only that. Only thing. that speed. Uh, do it one more time, Paji. I think then, it, because you have to going off your count. Yeah, yes. So I'm going to play the slower beat. The, the speed is same. I'm kind of just kind of a, emphasizing on that people confused with that one. So it's a, like a hoi. So slower beat. So he's kind of, a, um, the volume is increasing kind of, the speed is set. So, <clears throat> so justify the beat, how the volume went up. So you bring your leg high and then do here. You move right, left, just like Viper, your left foot on the inside, toward the right side, and then bring it out. So you'd go really low. Uh, and my apologies, uh, my sincere apologies, because without music and without real tool, sometimes I cannot show all the things <laughs> that I used to do. But anyway, I think you guys got that. Let me show you this move with the toe. So again, couple of things. You put your body weight on the right leg, which is kind of your dragging. 
and then stay low this position and bring your khondas in this like position don't do this so again hold the position khonda about one and a half hand length from the bottom and hold it like an attentive position going this way not going all the way down this next to your head going in this direction kind of a diagonal holding this way small small things make a big difference let me show you one more time this one and then we'll move on So same thing you can do for shika. Uh, so there's not much tapping involved. But it's high. You just go this way. See how the foot is coming. It's one, you don't go inside, outside. That's great. That's why I want to explain you here. And you go low. One, two, one, two. Make sense? Okay. And then you can. There's a very fine line. Some people would confuse it with ladi, but I would like to clarify this one add it here so now instead of left leg i'm using my right leg so you can keep your arms in this position fingers closed hands pretty straight so hold one two same beat two hold one two one two couple of variations you can do hold one two hold you look at the hands when you do okay same beat let me show you this one body variation the reason i'm showing these many variations if it looks good go for it last one i haven't seen this job for a while one of my students i think he was doing postdoc in switzerland at the time when he sent me this video so this is kind of our last one sorry guys taking time so last one so this one the rhythm is going up in the air your count instead of like pressing on the ground it is in the air one two one two this is my i'm using i was using my hand as a foot so this is my right foot on the front so you go low put your weight on the left leg and keep hands in this position you will see this move i think very close move when you put DAV College Amritsar Pangra 2004 when Chochmai is playing to all puppy girls on Bolia when the first the curtain when the curtain opens there's a guy in blue coming and it's a child type step you'll see that how he is doing that step very 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 good one unique job so I'm in this position so I'm trying to hit, see how my one is, I'm trying to hit one with this part of my foot like this way and the two with the internal side of my foot like this way. So look at one more time. I'm not moving any hands, so here. Kind of a unique child if you guys want to. Any any questions here? Okay, Paji, sure. Let's uh, 
So we'll go back a little bit. Um, one question was from uh, Vineet. I'm, Vineet, maybe I'm watching your screen so you can maybe describe what you were saying because I wasn't following. Um, he was asking, what are your thoughts on adding a small shoulder shake on the four and beat? Vineet, I'm watching you. Uh, I think you mean a foot up, right? I, what are you doing differently with the shoulder exactly? And you can take so, yourself off mute. Go ahead. Okay, so I, I'm doing a little thing. Uh, so uh, I've seen a lot of teams where they not just bring their leg up, but they also do a little uh, shimmy. shimmy. Okay, I got you. Yes, yes, I see what you're saying. Vineet, uh, very good question. This step is called tunka. It is called tunka. It's so like a, I can show you because again, if you guys will be interested with this dummies class, I can arrange more classes because uh, there can be tamal class, there can be just a class for squats, chumar, ludi, uh, tamal and sal I can combine and so I can create different classes, different segments. But this is called tunka and I can, if you have asked now then, uh, so you, you put your weight on the left leg instead of right this one and you, you kind of uh, loosen your right leg and this is the L type position. So one, two, hot, one, two, hot, one. So that's the one. And the new version I saw that is, uh, so one, two, hot, one, two, hot, two, hot, one. So this concept is same. So what I did instead of bringing variation in my upper body, I brought that variation in my legs. So it's a kind of a variation, how beautifully you can say think and how beautifully you can execute that variation in you. Yep. Uh, thank you, Paji. Good one. Um, another question was from Trisha was, uh, I have seen a lot of dancers lead with a heel toe movement instead of a step when they walk in chal. So basically, I think what she's saying mm -hmm. is, uh, if you can see my feet. Oh, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Um, I think she's. I think she's saying like that instead of full foot up. I know yeah, this is one. Is full foot just looks better to me? But go ahead. So that's a very good question. When uh, another example, I, I was kind of uh, planning to use if we continue this class, Lavia or Morcha or Jandu Singhia, because uh, I was lucky that I had my teachers both from Malwa and Maja regions. I got the flavor from both regions. So Maja region is like a more kind of a heavy steps. So just as an example, when I do full feet, full foot or full feet steps, I really, really enjoy it because it brings that tuck tuck in my brain. So like for instance, I'm doing chal on just on my toe. So it, it doesn't give me, I don't relish, I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy it. But when I do this thing on full foot, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot one more chal, guys, sorry. Let me quickly explain you with this example. So uh, that was uh, used to do like this one. It was like hot, one, two, three, four, hot, hot, hot. It's like a marching toward that. So if I use my full foot, again, let me show you one more time with you guys. So it's like a four pieces of simple tamal with a kunda in hand, um, on the right hand. One, two, hot, three. Four, hold, hold. and you make a little neck movement and then hold. <laughs> the neck. So just marching toward the stage. So if I use my full foot, I really enjoy it. And I do my chal with Morchal or Laria or Jandusingia. I always say to kids use full foot. It brings kind of a, it, when you are bending on your foot, you really enjoy it. And it adds a kind of a grace to your step too. Uh, Paji, and I, I, I guess I misunderstood the question. Uh, Trisha, if you're on audio, you can ask Trisha. And she was saying she's at work, so she can't put on her video. But um, if you can ask through audio, great. If not, just message me and I'll try to get the answer for you. She was asking something a little different about the placement. She said placing the heel, then the toe. Can I'm not, you hear I'm not me? exactly sure which one. Go ahead, Trisha. No. Oh, great. Wonderful. Yeah, it's a distinct uh, heel toe. So the, when they step, They'll step with the heel first and make a really solid um, contact with the floor there and put their weight down. And then they'll tap down with the toe. So it'll be like a ba, 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 
ba ba movement. So it's like a very distinct two beats on one foot. Um, and then they'll drag their back foot with it. And it looks like uh, Vineet knows what I'm talking about and can demonstrate. Sorry, guys, my camera's not working. No worries. Vineet, maybe you can show. I'm not sure, yeah. Okay, I, I got that. I have honestly, uh, I have never seen that movement. Only yeah, place. I don't think I have. Yeah. The only place where we used here, the step that I showed you after four pieces of tamal, when I'm standing, then I will bring my heel like that. See how <laughs> my foot is. Can you guys see my foot here? Maybe it was, or should I go back? So here. And then I'll use my forefoot. But there's a whole different thing when uh, the thing I'm working with my kids on tumor where you can use heel, where you can use your toe. But I, I'm sorry, I, I haven't seen that. But if you have any, when you look for these steps, look for Pangra videos on toe for some of the renowned teams that I'm aware of. Khalsa College Amritsar, DAV College, Jalandhar, Lalpur Khalsa College team was pretty good. I don't know what is the status. Nowadays, not as, yeah, not as active, yeah. I want to recommend about uh, even uh, PAU College of Agriculture. That uh, that story ended a while back, when uh, <laughs> a couple of years back, because it went back to a game to different style. Yeah. Rafia, Rafia, I think, club, they took over that place. So that membership was over, I think. So... Uh, Trisha said she will um, send a, uh, a video if she can find it. So no worries. Um, okay, but, uh, uh, I haven't seen doing... Uh, uh, child with heel, if it makes sense. Always. Two, sorry, go ahead. But uh, I was just saying two other questions that also came up um, is uh, for this was I think this was for uh, Kunde Chal when you bring your foot the Kunde Chal would not not the breakdown but the one where you bring your foot from back to forward when you went back from forward um, from the back of the room that one uh, the question two questions was does the torso move so does your upper body move with that and second question was. Do, do you kick your foot out or keep a stiff angle on the knee when you're doing that one? And uh, Atif, if you're on, if you want to demonstrate exactly what your question is, you can, uh, you know, put it on video. Yeah, uh, so for the Kunde Chal, you got, you got it with the, the torso movement like this versus uh, just keeping a stiff torso versus kicking the foot with one and two and one and two. It, does that make sense? I think I did the child both ways, didn't I? Because the one that I was doing, the marching one, I did not move my body. I was just kind of a kept on, like it's like, two. I did not move my foot inside and outside. That was a different march. I, I, I would name it as a marching child. Like you're marching from the backside of the stage or middle of the stage to the front. So let me show you one more time if it makes sense. So I'm just kind of a... Position is pretty much same. I'm putting my weight on left leg and three, just moving forward. And I'm not moving my left foot inside and outside here. But when I was, when I showed two different variations, it's low beat and high beat. That one was, I was moving here. Yeah, your body moves that way, definitely. So one, two, one. To, yep, your body moves that way. That way. That, that was your question. Yes. Yeah. I think. So, that, sorry, Atif. Yeah, that was your question, right? Makes sense. So your body moves inside as well when you're bringing your. But on the marching child, because there are so many things. Some sometimes you cannot imagine that during the time of competition, uh, because there's one thing I would like to tell you that toolies they know about rhythms. This is my you can say personal take on that. They bring. Uh, steps from other regions to their region because they go they play, go and play toll with different teams but they are not very good instructors they okay. cannot show you the steps okay they can give you the framework okay so i had several discussions like for two hours three hours one discussions with master john christ Toli after our rehearsals every day when my team was like preparing for the competition so several we it clears several of my concepts, like how you can move your body, move your feet and things like that. And sometimes I cannot, you can say, comprehend all of those things. So this is the marching child, I completely forgot about that. So marching child, you keep your body straight, head high, 
uh, chest out and position like that. But in the other type, two types that I showed you, it definitely moves. And you can see that shawl in our PAU College of Agriculture 99 video. That was the last time I performed on the competition stage. So, any other question? question, Paji, that came in. Um, on the uh, Shike Chal, the Clara yeah. was asking, when you put out your hand like this, okay, sometimes mm -hmm. some teams move the front hand when they're doing the tuck like this. She's saying, oh, yeah. do, you want it, do you like it better straight? The front hand, not the, not the back hand, the front hand. Do you want uh, the front hand uh, siddha or do you want it also moving as uh, as the movement? I'm sorry about that. Yeah, the best, uh, you can see that video, uh, PAU, PAU College of Agriculture 2005. 2005, comeback. yeah. I'll find comeback. it. I'll post it. Comeback. But so the word is come back. They have 2005 come back. And you will see some of the uh, boys there, four boys they are uh, using shikas and four boys they are using kundas. It's a combo again and crossing at the lines. So you will see that how they are doing that. You will see. Yeah, it's right that. I'm sorry I don't have the shika and it's been more than. 16 years that I haven't hold the shika, so <laughs> yeah. Okay, any, any other questions? Let me just check one second. Um, I think that's all, unless anybody else has any audio or, or uh, chat questions, I think that's all. And my apologies again for this one, Chal one. So, but if you try this one, make it an eight piece or four piece, I would go for four piece. Again, this one, sit down and review and think about other upper body variations you can bring because one is one and two or 11 when two people sit together, sit together, they can bring more, you can say things into the, into the game. Okay. Awesome. I'm pretty much okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank, uh, thank you so much, Gurinder Paji, for again, taking the time uh, and, and joining in. Hopefully all of you also got some benefit from this. Thank I see some clapping. They're giving you some applause, Paji. So looks like it, it was very well received. And, uh, and I'm very thankful that we got to reconnect. We, this is the first time you and I have done Pangara together in a long, yeah. long time as well. So that was nice. <laughs> um, what we would love to do is if all of you will continue to support this. Uh, and you know the way you can show your support is comment and upload your videos, tag MN Folk Pangara, tag Learn Pangara Now. We will continue to do these sessions. Uh, we are Gurdan Dipaji and I were talking about Chummar next uh, as one of the potential ones. There's always questions about Chummars. There's always questions about, uh, you know, with Kamal and all this stuff. So we can continue this on if there's enough uh, support. Looks like there's a lot of support for it. So um, so thank you so much, uh, all of you, for joining. Gurdan do you have anything else to add? Otherwise, we'll just work on the schedule and announce the next one. Yes, I, I have. I'm, 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 again, I apologize for that. I brought... Sure for you as well because I didn't mean to show this Pangra on toll because several of you got used these steps on song. Let me use one song and show some of these stuff. So then you will get a kind of Perfect. Idea. great yeah. idea. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Because when I do my homework, I do like a scientist research fall and then collect my database and then go from there. So let, let me use a couple of songs and then we can go from there and you will see that how what I mean. Burn some calories, guys. Let's do it. I'm connecting with my speaker, yeah. So this was the one example. Let me share one more song. It brings a new vibe in the in the in my in my basement, guys. When the music kicks in, okay. Uh,
There's advertising. Geico there. is now offering an extra 15% credit on car and motorcycle policies. Huh. So what are you waiting for? DJ Khaled to be your motivational coach? Eight, Eight seconds. seconds. I'm going to brush in a circle oh. motion. Put in that word, Devin. Save an extra 15% when you switch by October 7th. songs. I have few few more examples uh, for child type stuff. Make sense? Good luck guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it everyone again. If you have any additional questions, uh, Apaji and I can stay on for like one or two minutes. Um, but otherwise, appreciate the support. We will continue to, uh, it looks like there's enough interest. We'll continue to do these classes. And, uh, and we'll figure out the next uh, rhythm. If you have any requests, feel free. You can DM uh, uh, Learn Pangra on Instagram and just ask, you know, say, here's what I'd like to learn or, you know, 